Good evening all and welcome. I'd like to thank everyone who voted in our most recent poll regarding the level of audio in the videos. I have decided that I'm going to elevate the audio of today's video just a bit, speaking a bit closer to the microphone to see what you guys think of it. So please be sure to comment down below to make your voice heard. If you don't comment, I assume you loved it. All right then guys, let's jump into it because we've got some really excellent night shift stories. So get comfortable and let the darkness take control. This happened when I was a bartender about four years ago, but I think about it often, and it has changed the way I operate throughout life. I now refuse to go to any store alone after midnight. I was 25, and an attractive slender blonde at the time. On a busy Friday night, I was bartending with the bar manager, and he had noticed that we were very low on some bar necessities after the dinner rush. Lemons, limes, bitters, that kind of thing. So I was sent out to a 24-hour grocery store down the road to pick up the odds and ends that we would require to get us through the weekend. I picked up everything that was asked of me without trouble at the store, until I got to the liquor aisle. There were two country-looking guys that were probably around my age in the aisle, and they were staring at me and whispering to each other in a way that made me uncomfortable. So, I assumed they were making comments about me. All pretty innocent so far. Before they could approach me, I grabbed what I needed very quickly and power walked to the self-checkout. I really booked it out of there because when you're a bartender, it's kind of like you're on a stage and are required to be charming and interact with people that you otherwise absolutely wouldn't be able to tolerate unless you were being paid to do so. This is another reason why I'm not a bartender anymore. I get to the self-checkout, and hot on my tail are the two guys. I'm scanning my stuff, and they use the scanning station next to me. I get a better look at them now, as they are right next to me. One is taller, muscular, and average looking. The other one is shorter and more plump. They both looked dirty, and their eyes were completely bloodshot. I'm not even sure if they were high or something or had already been drinking for a while. They continued to stare at me, and our eyes awkwardly met. So I did the pleasant, midwesternly thing to do and flashed them a quick, half-assed, closed-lipped smile to be polite. The taller one starts trying to talk to me. Hey, looks like you're ready to party, huh? I replied something like, yeah, something like that. It's not for me, though. They walk closer to me and ignore their responsibility to scan their items. Oh, must be for your boyfriend, huh? I flash the awkward, tight-lipped smile again and roll my eyes slightly, like, this is your hint that I'm not interested, fellas. The taller one continues to try to talk to me. You should come hang out with us tonight. We could show you a real good time if you know what I mean. No thanks, I'm good. I already have plans. But the tall one starts to get upset that his moves aren't working like he'd hoped, and starts using a more threatening tone and moves very close to me, literally two inches away, but I ignore him staying focused on the scanner. I don't think he had showered in a few days by the smell of him. He gets a little louder and says, I see how it is. You probably only screw doctors and rich men like that. You think you're too good for us? We can show you that you aren't. We can teach you a lesson. Now, I'm not sure what context he meant this in, but it definitely wasn't good. Still not looking at him, I turn away, so my body is blocking his view of my purse, which I set on the scanner, to grab my four-inch pocket knife out and slide it up my jacket sleeve in case I need to protect myself, acting like I'm searching for my wallet. I do this, however, in view of the self-scan worker standing at her podium and look at her with wide eyes trying to communicate that I do not feel safe and that I might need help. I turn back to the machine and slide my credit card to pay while the creepy and hostile guys are practically standing on top of me. The machine malfunctions and starts beeping. The lady worker comes over immediately 
and the guys standing next to me change their expression from, I'm planning to torture you for a few days and toss your body into a creek, to just your friendly good old country boys making polite conversation over here. They actually tried to act like I knew them, and were friends, so the worker wouldn't be alerted to their ill intentions. They tried joking with the worker, saying I was stealing something and that's why the machine went off. The worker was definitely not buying it. She was a six foot tall woman with some muscle on her. I wouldn't mess with her on my best day. She pressed a few buttons on the screen, shooting the guys a very unimpressed look when they were trying to act charming and cancels the order completely. She turns to me and says, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. This machine seems to not be working correctly. Why don't you gather your things and I'll ring you up at an actual register. She puts her hand on my back and gives me a wide-eyed look like I gave her a minute earlier, letting me know that she sees I'm in danger. I pick up my things and follow her to a register that's near the security office. The guys linger around the self-scan still glaring at me and eventually complete their purchases but stand at the exit assuming they're waiting for me. I felt like I would be walking to my death if I made it to my exit in that moment. The worker keeps a close eye on the guys and scans my items. As she's scanning, she tells me there really wasn't anything wrong with the machine I was using. It just misread my credit card. And she said, I had a bad feeling about those guys from the moment they walked in. And then I saw them getting aggressive towards you. I already rang security to be ready to walk you to the parking lot and make sure you left safely when you were ready to leave. Then I saw you take that knife out and put it in your sleeve, getting ready to protect yourself. Good girl. As much as I'd like to see you show them, they picked the wrong girl to mess with. I'm glad I was able to pull you aside and make sure you were safe. I see them waiting by the door for you. I'll just keep pressing buttons on the screen and act like I'm having trouble with your order until they give up and go outside. Our security officer and I are both going to escort you to your vehicle when you leave. I thought to myself, this woman seriously deserves a raise. I thanked her over and over again and told her what they said to me, and I was getting afraid because I don't know what these guys are capable of. As I'm talking to her, my bar manager calls me to see what's taking so long. I explain what's happened, and he was obviously very concerned and ready to come up there himself and kick some ass. A sweet sentiment indeed. By the time I hung up, the guys had given up and walked out to the parking lot. The worker said to give it another few minutes because she had a feeling they may still be in there, waiting for me to walk out and see which vehicle was mine so that they could follow me. My instant thought was, now way, they have to have been gone by now. But I was wrong. The worker and security guard escorted me out and it was after midnight, so you can imagine how empty the lot was. Towards the back of the lot, there sat an old, big pickup truck running with the lights on pointed towards the store. It was a huge parking lot, and it wouldn't have made sense for them to initially park like that. So I'm assuming they moved the truck to sit that way, so that they had a full view of when I exited the store and got to my vehicle. It was like being stalked by hungry lions. When I unlocked my car and they saw that me, the worker and the guard were looking directly at them, and that I wasn't getting in my car until we watched them leave, they then peeled out of the parking lot. I mean, they seriously did a burn out to establish that they were pissed and trying to intimidate us. Ah, poor creeps didn't get their way. I thanked the worker and the guard over and over again, as I'm certain that they had just saved my life, or at least saved me from having to live with whatever those guys were planning to do to me. I did write a long letter to the store manager, and their corporate location describing how their employees protected me and how grateful I was. I really hope that earned her a promotion, bonus, raise or something. She didn't know me at all and was ready to protect me, which really isn't her job, but she did it anyway. Needless to say, I do not go late night shopping by myself anymore and never will again. I work as a security slash nighttime attendant at an apartment building. It's 24 stories and one of the oldest in the city. 
One night I'm sitting here when the phone rings at about 3 a.m. and I answer. Hello. This is Daniel at front desk. How can I help you? The voice on the other end sounds female, but was totally garbled, and the only bit I could make out was 23rd floor. I tried to tell the person that I could not understand them and asked which apartment they were in, but again garbled a response and I just made out 23rd floor. After the third time of trying to understand them and the same response, I said since I couldn't understand them, I would go up and meet them in the hallway. So I go to the main elevators and surprise, surprise, they are both on the 23rd floor. Fortunately, we have an older service elevator and it's only on the 7th. So I call it down, get it and hit the button for the 23rd, but it won't move and the inner door won't close. So I go to unlock the reset panel and boom, we start going up, door still open. I'm freaking out a bit and the elevator is shaking because it goes pretty fast and is old. As I'm ascending, I just stay towards the back and finally, I reach floor 23. I step out, door closes just fine and I look around the hallway. There's nobody around. I walk along slowly trying to listen for anyone awake who might have called but there's nothing. So now I head in the opposite direction and go towards where the regular elevators are and when I get to them, they are just sitting there with their doors open. I was pretty freaked out, but I knew it would just be the elevators going fritz. So I get in and figured I'd just reset them and get them to floor one. When I heard the sound of the back stairwell closing, I quickly get out, go to the stairwell and lo and behold, there's no one there. But the maintenance door to the machine room is ajar. And at that time, I'm the only one in the building with a key. At the top of the building is a large machine room housing all of the really loud machinery that does stuff in the building and allows access to the roof. I don't like going into there because it's creepy as hell and no one ever goes in there. So at this point, I'm seriously freaked out but muster up and head inside. Hello, I shout, but to no response. The lights in this room flicker because they're terrible fluorescent, so I can't see well either but at the end of the room, I can make out the roof access door and sure as hell, it's slightly open. So I slowly continue forward, checking the space in between each machine as I walk by to make sure there's no one there and there isn't. I open the roof door access. I can't see anyone ahead of me on the roof, but there is a slight wrap around. And if there was a jumper or something, I needed to be sure, so I step out and leave the door ajar like it was. Almost immediately, the door is pulled shut. Now I might have written off as wind or something, but this door is hard to shut and really hard to open, really hard. I immediately grab the handle and hank it open, slam it behind me and run straight for the maintenance door. It automatically locks when it's closed so I slam it shut too and go back to the 23rd floor hallway, get into an elevator, which the doors are still open for, and go all the way down to the first floor. I go back to the main lobby, and as soon as I sit down, the phone rings. I pick it up, don't say a word, and sure as hell, garbly voice again, the only audible thing I can hear is a voice saying, 23rd floor. I hung up the phone, turned off the ringer, and spent the rest of the evening just staring at the parking garage security monitor. There's been a bunch of creepy things happening in this building. It's basically like the Overlook Hotel at night. I walked past a dark room here on the first floor once and swore I saw myself standing inside it. The next night as I'm inside said room cleaning, the lights flip off and I turn around to see a quick flash of myself walking past. There must be some creepy ghost or something playing games with me at work. Why was it trying to lure me onto the roof of the building? I can only speculate. Perhaps it wanted to throw me off. 
working in the third largest building on the planet for floor space. It's about 3 a.m. on a Sunday, and I'm walking down an aisle into the middle of my department. At this time, the place was nearly vacant as it was a holiday weekend, and we had only myself and a skeleton crew of maintenance workers under my direction working in another department, all of whom were males. As I'm working by my offices on the plant floor, the power goes out, and the plant drops into the most absolute darkness I've ever experienced. Power gone, I hear the various machines spinning down to rest, and the silence becomes overwhelmingly relative to the background noise I'd gotten used to. The faint sounds of running water become evident. In the moments after the blackout, while I'd begun searching my pockets for my phone, and the flashlight, it offered. As my hand found the phone, a scream erupted from somewhere nearby. Muffled and distant, it was the kind of scream you hear from a five-year-old girl in her first haunted house, as the bloody clown steps around the corner and fires up a chainsaw. It startled me so badly. I immediately dropped my phone into an alternate dimension. The scream continued, a constantly fading note that seemed to be moving away from my position. Panicked and terrified, I fumbled around the dirty floor for my phone and found it seconds before the emergency lights lit up the plant with the eerie glow of yellow light. Sweat beaded on my forehead as I looked around me. Muscles tense, I'm ready to defend myself against whatever this was. I tried to radio a few times before I realized that the power outage meant the digital frequencies were useless without the receiver up in the main office. I started to move through the various production lines towards where I assumed the scream had originated, mind working furiously. I had no women in my crew tonight, and we were the only people allowed in the plant. So where had the scream come from? Details began to press into my mind that I hadn't noticed before. The apparent youth of the voice behind the scream made no sense, and it was a scream of pain, the kind you cannot even attempt to control. It had faded away from my position gradually, and then trailed off as if she had run out of breath. As I stepped towards two products on one of the final assembly lines before a wide open space in the next apartment, the emergency lights dimmed, that audible electricity buff filling the space around me. Struggling to understand what was happening, my senses were again knocked askew when the normal plant lights blazed to life above my head, leaving spots across my vision for a moment and forcing me to raise a hand to shield my eyes. As the shadow crossed my vision, I saw it, or rather, I saw her only for a moment. She stood there, hands outstretched towards me, a vague outline partially hidden behind one of our products. Dark features were the only distinguishable characteristics I can remember, as my reflexes in that moment had been to blink against the bright lights, and she was gone after that. To this day, I have no idea if what I saw was real or if I had imagined it. No tales are told to the mysterious young woman in the repair hall, not by anyone but myself. No one knows of any deaths matching her description in the area or ghosts known to haunt the plant. Not a soul has heard a scream in the darkness, not before, during, or after those black pre-dawn minutes. Believe me, I tried to find someone, anyone with information that might explain what I saw, all to no avail. I'm left wondering with a memory more crisp than any photo I've seen of that young woman standing in the distance, her arms stretched towards me, Needless to say, I did not revisit the location of said event, ever, because nopes don't get any bigger than that. When I was 17, I was an IHOP server. I absolutely loved working the graveyard shift. The money was good, I had great regulars and lots of fun drunks. Whatever. Well, it's 4 a.m., and we need to cut our cook on Saturday night. Problem is, it's two hours before his wife wakes up, 
so he has to chill for a few hours in the restaurant or get a ride home. Well, the cook had been doing our manager a favor by coming in, so she asked me to take him home. I asked him where he lived, and he said North Tulsa. Okay, so anyone who knows anything about Tulsa knows that North Tulsa is where all the gang shootings and violent crimes happen. South Tulsa is where all the rich people live and where we were. Upon hearing this, my manager who's a mama bear type is like, no, absolutely do not take him home. I laugh her off and see that the cook is pretty desperate. So I say I'll drop him off. She looks really disturbed and tells me to hand over my apron with all my cash in it. And she tells me that I can get robbed. Best if they just take my wallet and not the 130 plus dollars. Cool, whatever, just don't be stupid. I know about North Tulsa, and I know that it's all highways to get to his house. So I go, take him in my huge suburban SUV, and take him to his ghetto neighborhood. I get turned around on the route back, and ended up going to a gas station for directions. I go to a quick trip, which is one of the nicer gas stations and park my car in the front glass door, when I see two women at the payphone out front and don't think much about it. I lock my doors, roll up my windows and get inside, get directions from the dude at the cashier desk and get back to my car. And the two women are nowhere to be seen. So this is how it goes. I get in my car, check my written directions and then notice something in my rear view window. I turn around and there are two people crawling out from my back seat into the seats just behind me. They knock over a box of VHS tapes that I was getting rid of as they crawl over the seats. I had forgotten that my trunk doors don't lock. My horn in my car doesn't work, but I flicker my headlights right into the quick trip, trying to get the guy's attention. These are the women from the phone booth earlier, and both of them seem like they're high on something because they're giggling like nuts. One of them is just reading my VHS tapes out loud and throwing them. The other one, jovial, just insists, Hey, we need a ride home. So being scared does stupid things to you. Like, I know that this was stupid, and I should have just gotten out the car. But instead, about to wet myself, ask her where she lived. Just down the road. In the rearview mirror, she looks like she's really messed up on something. Her hair's looking nasty, her clothes are all dirty. And in hindsight, I'm wondering if she's homeless. I keep flicking the lights, and when it seems like nothing is happening, I bolster myself and pull out of the parking lot. Whatever, I'm gonna be just fine. Just drop them off, I say. And then she says, That's right, girly. And that makes my skin crawl and I drive her in the direction she's pointing. So we drive and drive and drive. It's dark, the highway is long, and the other one is like, ask her for money. I'm feeling petrified. I feel like it's been 10 minutes, then 15, and all they're doing is messing up the back seat of my SUV and telling me to keep going. Eventually we get to this country road and there's nothing I can identify out here. The roads have potholes and I'm trying to think fast. I start seeing dilapidated houses and motorhomes. They're taking me somewhere and I don't know where that is. And just as I'm lost in my thoughts, the first one leans real close to me between the seats and says, Are you scared, girly? Let me tell you, those four words nearly made me wet myself. I slam on the brakes at that. Fear does stupid things. And looking back, I can see how dumb that was but you don't know what to do when you're scared until you're there. She's thrown halfway into the front seat and the other one is cussing her head off. I start slamming on everything, making my five foot eight self seem as big as scary as humanly possible. I slam the glove box over and over again and I'm screaming at the top of my lungs that I have a knife and to get out of my car. I have a knife. When in fact, I don't have anything. I just started kicking and thrashing, and screaming, and cussing. It's all kind of this crazy fear-induced mania, and eventually one of them figures out how to unlock the door, 
and they roll out my car with half of my VHS tapes onto this country road. And with that, I slam on the gas and drive off as fast as possible. I am terrified to turn around and at some point I find the highway again. I'm still just as lost as before, but I don't stop for directions and it takes me a good 45 minutes to figure out how to return back to the IHOP. To be honest, I'm so mad at the guy at the cash register, but I don't know what was up. My manager is getting off shift and she had thought I'd died. I remember being so damn happy to see her, but how? Fear is a stupid thing. When I was working as a cop on a military base, I loved working night shift. Didn't deal with 99% of the stuff that day shift dealt with, and what little stuff we did deal with was usually really uninteresting. Well, most every building on base is alarmed, and the alarms are tied right into the desks, so we know the instant they go off. When we get an alarm activation, we close the base, go check the building, pull on all the doors and see if we can get in. If we can, we go into the building and secure it, check all the doors and corners to see if anyone has set the alarm off. Well, one night, I was on patrol with my alpha, or partner, and we get called to respond to an alarm activation at the elementary school. So we go, secure the building, and call in that the building is all secure. No problem, keep patrolling. About 15 to 20 minutes go by, and we get another alarm activation. We get back out there, and check. And now, there is a maintenance door open that leads into a boiler room. Nothing in it. We close it, lock it, and get out. Another 20 minutes, and another alarm. We respond. All the doors are still locked, and we can't get in. The maintenance door is locked, and we call in the all clear. This time, my buddy and I sit on opposite sides of the school and watch to see if someone is coming and yanking the doors really hard to set the alarm off. We sit there and watch. Nothing happens. And right as we're about to leave, another alarm activation goes off while we're sitting there. We inform the desk that we'd like the building manager on site to help us secure the interior and let us in. Bear in mind at this point it's roughly 3am. The building custodian shows up, and we start doing a walkthrough checking all the classrooms and checking all the maintenance rooms, and that's when we see one of the maintenance doors open with the lights on in the room. Now this room is literally the size of a closet. We walk down there and look in. No one's in it, and that door is locked when it closes. We look in there and find a single footprint of a bare foot made of water. Left foot, as I recall. It appears to have been made by a small child. It freaked the living hell out of us because no one reported a missing child and the entire building was clear and still locked up. No one left. No one entered and we checked every inch of the damn place. Literally, a three hour deep sweep, including ceiling tiles, freaked the ever loving crap out of us. And to this day, my partner refuses to go into that school. Speaking of which, schools really are spooky when they're empty. This happened to me about a week ago. I found a summer job at our local supermarket, and about two weeks in I got asked to work the late night shift, which is 11pm to 5am. I accepted, since I was in need of more money and hardly ever sleep early. Everything was fine and dandy until about 3am, when a shirtless scarred up guy came into the store. After lingering around the store for a while, he quickly came up to the counter making intense eye contact with me. As I was about to ask him if he needed any help, he whispered, Don't you dare move. I didn't hear him at first, so I asked him if he could repeat that. At that point, he got agitated and yelled, Make another sound and I will cut you up. 
In a swift motion, he vaulted over the counter going to the alcohol section, trying to grab a bottle of whiskey. Thankfully, the owner has hidden a baseball bat under the counter. The moment he turned his back to me, I took the bat and swung full force at his knee. He winced in pain and tried to get up. I winded my bat again like I was going to hit him, just to see him pull out a homemade shiv of some sort. I let him get up, and the moment he got back up, he swung his shiv at me, lacerating my wrist. I pushed him back with the bat, and he ran for the door and got out. The day after, I called the cops and showed them the security camera footage, but they haven't contacted me since. I think it's safe to say I won't be working the late night shift again for a while. This night took place a few years ago, while my father and I were living in a small rural town in Alberta. I was fairly new in this town and didn't know anyone but my dad and co-workers. I had found a job as a key holder in a liquor store that closed every night at 2am. My store was located in between a pharmacy and a grocery store, a place well lit, where I felt safe most nights. Not knowing yet that this town was actually known for its drug problem and random creeps. But anyway, on this particular night, my co-worker and I had been working late. We needed to finish unloading pallets of liquor, since we had another shipment coming in the next morning. And at the end of the night around 3.30am, I told my co-worker that she could leave, and that I was going to take care of closing down the store which basically meant counting the till and cleaning up, as she was exhausted, and I had the keys of the store anyway. After she left, I quickly finished my tasks to call my staff and called my father. At the time, I didn't have a car, and my dad would come pick me up every night and bring me back home, which was maybe a 10-15 to 15 minute drive to my workplace. I have an amazing father. In return, I always made sure to be ready and to wait outside the store for his arrival. I didn't want him to have to wait for me, because I knew he didn't have much time left to sleep as he had to be at work in the morning. I got ready to get out the store, set out the security system and locked the door behind me. Now you have to understand that I wasn't supposed to finish this late at night, and that once the alarm system was on, I couldn't go back inside because the regional manager would receive a security call if I opened the door and the alarm would automatically start to ring, and I did not have the code to shut it, since I never worked a morning shift. This store policy mentioned that if you forgot something inside, you'll have to wait until the next day to get it back. As I was waiting for my dad standing in front of the store, I heard some noises coming from my left. It sounded like someone was breathing loudly. The pharmacy was right next to my stall, and had these big red columns in front of the entrance, and I thought the noise was coming from around these columns. I looked to my left, but didn't see anything, so I brushed it off, thinking that it was probably the wind, or just my very tired self imagining stuff. It was almost 4am after all, and I had worked really hard that evening. After a few minutes, I heard the noise again. I started getting nervous. It was definitely coming from my left, and this time, I knew that it wasn't all in my head. At that moment, I noticed a movement and realized that I wasn't alone. A few meters away on my left, someone was crouched down behind one of the columns, and I could not see his face, only his hands holding one side of the column while he was slowly moving his head to look in my direction. I was terrified completely paralyzed with fear. I knew my father couldn't be very far away from the store at this point, so I grabbed my phone to call him. My dad answered and I told him to hurry up and explained that someone was hiding next to me and that I was petrified. My dad said that he was going as fast as he could and told me to grab my keys and get inside the store. I was trying to find them inside my bag when I was panicking too much my hands were shaking, and I couldn't find my keys for the life of me. I felt completely horrified when I realized that the man had stood up, still hiding behind one of the columns only a few meters away from me. My voice filled with fear. I asked my dad where he was, and he shouted that he was almost there. 
I started to slowly move towards the grocery store that was on my right, never turning my back to him. The very tall and imposing man looked at me again, but this time, he got out of his hiding spot and started to walk in my direction with the biggest smile on his face. I can still recall thinking that this was it. I was going to die. I was trying to decide if I should start running for my life or if it was better to face him and fight him if need me. But suddenly, I heard a big noise coming from my right. I turned around and saw my dad driving as fast as he possibly could into the parking lot, honking and turning his high beam headlights on, I believe to startle the man. My feet finally decided to move as I ran as fast as I could and jumped inside my dad's pickup, tears streaming from my eyes. I watched this man look straight up at us and slowly wave at my father for what felt like an eternity. The creepy man started walking closer towards us and as he got closer, my father finally gets a good look at the man and said, oh my God, girl, I guess you haven't met Peter yet. I didn't understand. My father started laughing tears coming out of his eyes while I looked up at him, still in complete shock. To me, there was absolutely nothing funny about that moment. A few seconds before, I thought my dad couldn't get here fast enough and that I was going to be murdered right there in front of my workplace. My father waved back at him and we drove off slowly. On our way home, he explained that Peter was a very nice man with a cognitive disability. He said that Peter lived in town and that every morning he would sit inside the Tim Hortons that was located in the same parking lot as my store and would ask people if they wanted a hug. He apparently did that every day and everybody in our small town knew him. My dad told me I should probably give him a big hug next time and I would get a coffee at Timmy's since I probably scared the poor man to death. Either way, Peter the hugger I'm sorry, but let's not meet again. Well, not while I'm alone, outside at 4 a.m. It was winter 2012. I was 18 to 19 at the time, and working in a petrol station in an average-sized town in England. It was an okay job, good money for somebody who was at college at the time, and it was just a shame that it was a weekend job. So while my friends were getting drunk and having fun, I was in a petrol station, serving taxi drivers and the occasional drunk. It started off like any other night. Serve people, clean up, do stock and average night shift work. And since it was winter, the night was really dark and you could only see faint outlines of people walking back and forth, even with streetlights. The place where I worked was situated across the road from a pub and had an alley running beside it, leading to a housing estate. Around 3 to 4 a.m. as I finished cleaning a set of shelves, I noticed a figure standing in the alley just out of the light, but just enough to hide his face, but you could make out his clothing. I initially brushed it off as someone waiting for a taxi, as it seemed harmless enough. I sat down in my chair behind the counter and looked at my phone and played some games for a bit. When I looked up, it was 5 a.m. and he was still there waiting, watching me. To make my situation worse, after five there's hardly any traffic or passers-by. I had that guttural feeling that he had some harmful intent. I was safe, however, as I was locked in until morning. I stared back in a trance, trying to keep an eye on whatever he would do next. After a while, I needed to use the toilet, so I went and came back, thinking he might have walked off, but he didn't. He was still there. I then decided to not do my last job until my co-worker came in to start their shift, as my last job was to take out the fire extinguishers and sand buckets. It got to 6am, and the figure faded back into the alley and I didn't see him for the rest of my shift. When my co-worker arrived, it was still dark, and I usually walked the 10 minutes back home, but I got a taxi after that shift. I felt that the guy could still be anywhere, 
just watching me. I told my co-workers and family members about my experience, and they said they personally haven't experienced anything like it, and wouldn't like to either. I was very nervous when doing my shifts from then on, feeling like as soon as I let my guard down he would strike, but thankfully nothing else happened after that, and I quit the following summer to go to university. Safe to say I don't want to meet the person in the shadows from that night. I work for a medical examiner and used to be on the graveyard shift alone. The first night I was on, at midnight on the dot, our air systems shut off, which caused the vents to warp. That sounded like someone running through the vents in the ceiling on all fours. Thankfully, I got used to it, but it definitely was creepy at first. Another night we lost power, and stupid me watching a horror movie, working so hard almost crapped myself when everything went dark, and knowing that a room with about 30 dead bodies in it was walking distance away. That one, I stayed in my car for. Not to mention the constant, long, dark, red-lit hallways. Glad I'm not an overnight worker now. I used to work in a bakery fairly early in the morning. My shift meant I had to come in at 3am, and it often meant I'd be the only person there for a few hours, preparing the breads and whatnot. We opened at 7, so time was precious trying to set everything up for the morning rush of customers when everyone else got there. One of the things that really got to me though, was the fact that I'm convinced the bakery was haunted. I'd only just started working there, when I'd hear slight taps by the fridge. I'd look over to see if I had put something askew and that it was going to fall off, but there was never anything there. The noise persisted for a few weeks, and then slowly died away, like whatever had done it had grown bored. But the real horror was a few months into me working there. It was roughly 4am. I hadn't had a lot of sleep, as my boyfriend had been over that night, and we'd been watching movies late into the night, much to my regret. I remember groggily kneading my dough, while listening to something on the radio, when all of a sudden a blood-piercing scream came from the toilets. It sounded like that of a young boy. That woke me the hell up. I instantly stopped what I was doing, instinctively brushed my hands on my apron, and started making my way towards the toilets. I shouted out tentatively if anyone was there, but I couldn't hear another thing. Now, this place is small, and it took me a whole three seconds to get to where the toilets were located after I put my hands all over my apron. No one. I sat on one of the chairs near the toilet area behind a wall to see if anyone was going to emerge, but nothing. I grew bored, washed my hands and had a good look around the place but couldn't find a thing. That really freaked me out. I went back to my duties, thoroughly creeped and had the music on high the rest of the time before anyone else arrived. I really wanted to ask one of my co-workers if they'd ever heard anything. So I went to one that I got along with really well and asked her straight up if there was anything spooky that happened here at the bakery. She gave me a smile and asked if I'd seen the little boy yet. She said that she'd seen the boy a few times while closing and asked if I'd seen him too. I shook my head and said that I heard something. She commented that he's quite vocal at night and to not be frightened. I quit shortly after that. Too spooky for me. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. I really do appreciate you guys sticking around. So tell me, did you guys enjoy tonight's stories? And of course, tell me what you thought of the audio level. It is a little bit higher, and based on your feedback, you know, we'll see what we do tomorrow. Anyway, for now guys, I'm going to also offer a huge thanks to my lovely members and patrons. You guys make a serious big help for me, and I'm really grateful for your help. So if anyone wants to be a member or a patron to get some cool benefits, feel free to join. Link in the description. But for now, I'm going to wrap it up here. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.